Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. He's Garrett Price. How's it going? Jared Wackerly's in California. Hey, Jared. California I dreaming. Surfing, bruh. Uh, but we're here regardless, and Jared's here in spirit because we are today and tomorrow doing a 2024 startup draft. Heck yeah, we are. Mock draft. Oh, wait, this is 2024 startup draft? I did mine based off oh, 2023. Dang it. dang it. Mine was an 83 <laughs> fantasy draft. I could definitely tell that's a lie because you took rookie picks. I did take rookie picks. You're right. So what we did is we threw rookie picks in here as well. So yeah. you can draft one, 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 two. We'll kind of go through all of that. Um, we did this with the nerd herd uh, as well. Jared Wacker is in it. Peter Bartowski, who is our editor, mm-hmm. who's our social media manager. He's in there. And we have some other. Yeah, Tristan Cooks. He's, uh, he's uh, one of our writers, good friend of ours. Uh, some other guys that are in the nerd herd. C. Polly, Debbie to Dynasty, FR. The Bev or the Beeve. Uh, I prefer the Beeve. The Beeve. All right. Uh, 1228. Oh, wow, Just Josh. Uh, Harbaugh, which I'm assuming is Andrew Harbaugh, who also writes for us. Uh, sedated Fork. First time I saw that name, called it Seated Fork, which I mm. feel like would hurt. I'm in a league with him. Are you? He's and a good I'm guy. And I'm in a league with Just Josh, for sure. I think that's it. Well, yeah. and all you fools. The, and Tristan and Peter and Jared. So mo- most of the people in this league. No, not most, but yeah. At that point, it's most. I know for sure sedated. <laughs> There's only 12 really people in it, Rich. You sure just named like not. eight. <laughs> it's, well, yeah. it's not most. <laughs> Definitely not. Plentiful. Uh, so we're going to talk. We're going to cover this. We're going to go through all the picks. It's yep. a super flex tight end premium draft. And what's fun 20 about. Rounds. Yeah, 20 rounds. What's fun about these drafts is it kind of gives you, you know, because rankings and draft startup are completely different things. They're completely different animals. Put your feet to the fire about how much you really appreciate a guy, but you're also building a team here. So it's not you're not just going to rank all these receivers really high because you need running backs, you need tight ends, you need depth, you need quarterbacks. So where do you grab that value? And we're going to talk before we get into the actual startup. We're going to talk a little bit startup strategy, like mm-hmm. what, how you guys feel about like what where do you like to draft at, um, what position, and what your overall strategy is. So, but first I want to ask overall. Were you guys satisfied with how your draft came out? I would say for me, overall, I was satisfied uh, with how my draft came out. There were a couple of things where I zigged versus zagged, uh, and, and I'll explain how and why that happened. Uh, but overall, I was, you know, when I went back and looked through my team, there were a couple things. Anytime you do a draft, you go back and look like, I would have tweaked that slightly if I could, but yeah, you know, that's uh, how you end up in 20 dynasty leagues. That's Garrett. exactly like, how you give me up. one more shot at it. It'll baby. be perfect. I'm going to draft time. the dynasty. And at any time I walk away from a startup and I'm like, crushed it, crushed it. A plus I, I come in eighth. Yep. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I have, there's like a con, there's a converse relationship between my feeling after a draft yes. and how my team actually performs yes. for sure. Yes. 100%. <laughs> I usually do pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I enjoyed. My, I think I did a pretty good job with my draft as well. I like uh, your team. Yeah, mine. I think came together pretty nicely. Uh, there were, you know, obviously there are oh, here and there. There's going to be spots where it didn't exactly fall the way you thought it was going to sure. fall. That happens in every single draft. You got to be able to kind of roll with the punches there and you know adjust your strategy kind of on the fly. So that's that's what I did, and and I ended up I think with a pretty balanced team, um, and it has a, a good chance to be good for years to come as well. Same. Ditto. Same. <laughs> Look at me. Uh, you know, the, obviously the big difference here is there's no trades. And there's definitely a couple of spots in here where I, I would have loved to, like, move back. Absolutely. In here. But, again, let's just assume that nobody could find a trade partner, which is very uncommon. Correct. But, like, what if you're in a draft that you could not trade? Let's see how it Scott all Scott Fishbowl every year is, is no trading. And 100%. Yeah. It's a big draft. It, it's a very big draft. Came in top 10, top 8 once. Yeah. A couple of years ago. So, Let's start, Matt. Like, what is like? So, first of all, do you usually like to pick in the front, the middle, or the back of a startup draft, and why? Well, you know, it. I I do like kind of being more in the middle. Um, there's something to be said about also being at the 
back end, like the last pick in the draft, which is what I ended up picking here, just because you get that fantastic feeling of double dipping every single time. And you, and I think you can really get some good value in that, that kind of slotting. I don't love going first because there is such a long wait to get back to your second pick. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I'm going to be picking and I have a choice, it's going to be middle to back end of the first round. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really okay on any one of those, any one of those spots. Um, but today was a good exercise and, and maybe even a reminder uh, of how much I actually do like picking back to back. So, so maybe the, the, the last pick in the draft um, might be kind of my jam. Yeah. And, and don't forget, not only do you, can you just uh, mock draft on sleeper, if you download the Dynasty Nerds app, we also have the mock draft capabilities there. And you can actually draft via your league settings. For any league that you have, you could, you could draft there. And also, your rookie drafts, you could do mock rookie drafts. All your uh, picks are imported into the Ooh. Dynasty GM. So, like, you could do rookie mock drafts for your actual rookie picks and not have to worry about taking those. Garrett, same question for you. Um Matt ended up picking 12. Where did you end up picking this draft? Where do you usually like to be and why? So I actually was the first one in when Peter was like, hey, we're doing the mock. Here's the board, blah, blah, blah. I clicked it. No one had picked a slot yet. So I actually did get to pick wherever I wanted to be in the draft. And it's a year-to-year basis for me. Typically, I like to pick within the top four or five in a super flex because I like getting an elite quarterback. Uh, so for me, you and I just went over our kind of tiers at quarterback, kind of agreed top two guys are kind of their own tier. And then it kind of moves down from there. So for me, I, I'm good. I'm good with being second in that tier. I didn't care if I got Mahomes or Allen. So I went with pick two and, and was able to get Josh Allen right off the rip. So, and you feel pretty good about that. I do. Yep. I, I like to have, because especially you never know how the rest of the draft's going to go. Typically I load up at quarterback when I can. But you never know how it's going to go. Sometimes people just go so quarterback crazy that you might not have a real opportunity to take a quarterback till much, much later. But as long as I have that steady one, I can play it a little more fast and loose at the position. If I if I don't have that solid guy, I, I I'm a little more handcuffed. So I like having that tried and true solid guy at the top. Yeah, I usually like to in a super flex team here in draft or any draft, I like to pick either up high, top mm-hmm. three, four. And I was like the third person behind you. I think I took I took spot four deliberately. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the Dynasty GM app, when I do mock drafts, I'll draft from either those top four or the back. And then I'll do, I'll do some in the middle too. So I do test myself in the mm-hmm. draft app. Like when I'm sometimes when I'm real bored, I'll jump in there and just do a startup mock draft because it kind of gives me a good feeling to myself about like how I really value players, right? Like yeah. I might go rank a player some here, but then I'll start mock drafting just to really put my feet to the fire to see if I really do like that player more because then – if I take that player ahead of the other player, I'll go back to my rankings and then readjust. Because I know then... I'm about to have to adjust on one player. I already know. that I have to readjust there. So I, I either want to be the front or I want to be the back. Because I love the I love the double dip of getting two really good players. Mm-hmm. But also, I don't mind being up top. Because like Garrett said, I get one of those top quarterbacks. And I know I'm getting really two good quality quarterbacks coming back around. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless it's third round reversal. That's right. going to change a little bit. You know, I don't love the middle because I, for me personally, like, I feel like and, and, and kind of like a selfish way. Like I have to check the, the draft way more often. Another reason, <laughs> yeah, an, sure. another sure. You pro. Do, you do feel like you're waiting the entire time. The entire picks. time. Yep. We're yeah, like, if you're at the front of the draft or the back of the draft, yep. like you pick, you have some time. It gives you way more flex. Like you, and then you also feel way more comfortable trading because if you have back to back picks, like I'm getting one player here for sure. And I, can, I have flexibility, so I'm not yep. getting back-to-back picks. I can move, and I feel comfortable right. moving. Where if you have pick six and you trade out of a round, now you're waiting like 24 picks, you know, yeah. depending on where you trade. Yeah, and, and, and obviously, you know, picking in the back of the round, uh, back end of the round works right now, right? Because we're in a cycle where I feel like there are enough quarterbacks, right, yep. that you can feel comfortable doing that. And you're, you're still if – you're, if you're missing out on those top two or three guys, the, the rest of the guys – Four through, I don't know, almost like 15, yeah, right now. 13, 14, 15 are pretty similar. They're all pretty young, 26, 27 yeah. or younger. Um, so you feel pretty good getting a couple of those guys uh, back at the back half of the first round. But that's not the case in all years and all we'll call them cycles, because I think that, that's kind of a larger, you know, maybe three, four year window or something like that. 
Um, but th- during this cycle of the NFL, I feel pretty good about that. Okay. And, you know, what I don't like about right around, like, pick, like, seven, eight, nine, right around there is in Superflex Leagues. For the most part, the best player available is usually, like, Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, maybe, like, maybe a running back. I would never do – I would never take a running back in the first round, but like, a Bijan or something like that. Yeah. Like, it's way more tempting to grab those guys. And I usually don't ever want to leave the first round – Without my like, without a quarterback, right. like I need, For sure. I need my first round pick in a super flex league to be quarterback because one, they're predominantly gonna be mostly picks at quarterback. We'll see how this played out, mm-hmm. but knowing then if I admit, if I take Justin Jefferson at seven, then not only am I not oh, okay, so I miss out on potentially the seventh best quarterback. Like oh, I'm getting the number one receiver, but I, over the seventh best quarterback, which. The seventh best quarterback is usually going to outproduce the number one receiver, anyways. Uh, real, real quick note: I know that it's a draft and it's a little easier for it to be visual. So if you're not watching us on YouTube, go to YouTube and watch it. We'll have the draft up there, so you'll be able to actually see what the board looks like. But we'll also po- post it on Twitter later uh, in the week, so that way it'll be easier to kind of track where everything is. Because as we talk about it, it'll probably get easy to get a little lost on. Who picked where and what players will? Yeah. It would be tough for me to there's, follow. There, yeah. There's a lot going on for sure. So we'll post a link to the draft. So if you want to like have it on your phone, follow along. It's on Sleeper. Mm-hmm. How that goes away. And going back to that receiver point is like okay. So I don't get the seventh best quarterback. I get number one receiver. But now you're getting like the twelfth best quarterback uh, when it comes back to you in the second round. If you via choose to go that way. Mm-hmm. And everybody builds their teams differently. We'll talk. We're going to go through each pick. Um, we'll go a little bit like slower this show. And get a little bit quicker the fall on the show because yep. you know those first four to six rounds, those first four to six picks, that's the core of your team. That's where you expect to get the value mm-hmm. to win long term assets here that you, you plan to have on your roster for at least five years potentially. Is the way at least how I look at those picks. Like I if I if I I'm not taking anybody. I'm just gonna get two years out of them in the first four rounds. It's just me. So we'll kind of go here pick by pick. If there's any pick at all that you guys feel like. I thought this was a bad pick, or that that's who I really wanted. We'll talk about it all sure. in depth. And and then kind of throws us off here of what maybe we didn't like this pick. We'll talk about why we didn't like this pick. And we'll take a little bit more time. And then tomorrow's show, wherever we end up, after yeah. about an hour here, we'll pick up. Because those last rounds will go way quicker. A little quicker. bit quicker. A little bit quicker. Guys, I got to tell you about my friends at Underdog Fantasy. Right now, they have the pre-NFL Draft 2024 Best Ball is live on Underdog. Draft your favorite rookie sleepers you've discovered in the Dynasty Nerds film room. Play in $3 contest all the way up to $1,000 contest. Draft your team and never worry about setting a lineup. You need to get in on this action ASAP. Sign up at Underdog with the promo code NERDS. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100 for new members only. And yes, Dynasty Nerds is still giving new users a free Nerd Herd and Dynasty GM annual bundle membership with your deposit of $10 or more at Underdog by using that promo code NERD. So you get all our tools, all access to the Nerd Herd by putting a $10 deposit down in there. Your Dynasty Nerds promo code will be sent by email within 48 hours of sign up. New members only. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1 800 Gambler. Visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, call 1 800 Next Step. In New York, call 1 877 Hope New York. In Tennessee, 1 800 889 9789. So let's kick it off here. Tristan Cook had the first overall pick. Uh, Garrett, like you said, you had two. Yep. I had four. Matt had 12. Right. Jared had 11. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they're right around there. So pick mm-hmm. one overall, Pat Mahomes. No shocker here. Nope. Peter, gone. Peter was right there at seven in the middle. And Peter was at seven. Yep. So this could have gone a couple different ways. But, again, we're talking tier-based. Pat Mahomes is the greatest quarterback I've ever seen play the position. He's incredible. So this is a pretty safe bet here. Insane. And then, Garrett, you're on the clock. Yeah. As, two. as I mentioned, I, I ended up taking Josh Allen there. That's why... I wanted to be towards the top there. I think those two, the consistency that you get every year out of them. It's not like oh, one year they've been good and one year they've been bad or this was their peak year. You know, They have just been consistently good every single year for as long as I can remember. Uh, so, and, and they're still fairly young. Yep. You know, Neither one of them have crossed 30 yet. So 
both of these guys are going to be on your team for a long time. So it was really, I didn't care which one fell to me, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. didn't matter to me. I'll take whichever one's left. And from a fantasy perspective, this is a guy who finishes number one, number two overall. Every year. Year in, year out. Yep. So at number pick number three, kind of our first shock of the draft. I would um, say so. Not a huge shock, but a, a little out of order. Surprising. That was surprising. When I saw it, it was it was a shock for me. C. Polly took C.J. Stroud. Yep. Which is, listen, C.J. Stroud was fantastic this year. Finishes, what, quarterback seven, six overall? Yeah, he had a great year. Somewhere around there. It's you're, you're taking somewhat of a risk here because you're just, it's off of one year seeing it. Like now we all love what we see. I don't hate the pick. Again, just surprised. But if you want your guy, then you get your guy, right? Like, right. so if CJ Stroud is your guy and you're like, yeah, I could have got him at six or seven, but you have pick three, you take your guy. I'm right? fine like with if it. He's tier, you take it. And, and if we had trading, maybe you would have tried to trade back a few picks and, and get extra draft capital and still get his guy. And, and what do you feel about that? Stra- like, because I'm a big, like, get your guy. And I'm a big, like, if you feel like when you're looking at ADP, right, and you're like, and this happens, like, all the time in drafts. How many times you see message? Oh, I got sniped. Oh, I just got sniped. That's yeah. what I wanted. When you look at ADP and you see a guy that is your guy, like, yeah. I want that guy on my roster. Don't be afraid to draft that guy around ahead of his ADP to ensure that you get, get him. Because I'm a big go get your guy guy. I'm with you to an extent. My guy, 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 guy. I'm with you to an extent. While I'm with you on in the sense of, yes, there are certain players that we love to have on our teams. You'll see one coming up in a few rounds for me that he's a guy I love to have. Had to make sure I got him. You know, you're lucky because I was gonna take him. I knew you were. That's why I took him because I knew he was about to go. Got your back, bitch. But, well, yeah, and you got me later. You got me later. Uh, I was going to get you, too, and then I didn't get the chance. Uh, but that being said, that can also be a big Achilles heel for people. If we're starting to draft way out of our actual ranks just to get players we like, just because you like the player doesn't mean they're a good player. And I think that sometimes, even me, like I mix those things up in my head. I really like that guy. Does that mean he's significantly better than this guy? No, it doesn't. I just really like him. And so that's the, the thing that I even have to battle at times that I think can get us in a little bit of trouble that we're just playing drafting players we like versus the players that we actually think will produce the most for it, us. It is a fine line, right? I mean, because you play fantasy football to have fun. You right? do. So you want to get as many of your guys as possible. You just aren't going to have fun if you're losing. <laughs> right. So it's you, more fun to win without your guys yeah. than to lose with your you guys. You really do have to be careful of that. One. And that's why I said one round ahead. Because then you're talking anywhere from like 6 to 12 spots. Like and, it's and, nothing crazy. And listen, if you if you jump a guy one round ahead and he's a young player, chances are you're just maybe a year early. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You're just you're just getting him where his ADP or maybe, maybe you'll be getting a huge deal yeah. on him a year from now. So, you know, if... If it's the right player, it works. Obviously, you don't want to sit there and do that throughout an entire draft. That's right. kind of like a cherry picking type of thing. Yes. Um, it'll so get you in trouble. Yeah, I think you're right. It'll get you into the scenario that <laughs> Garrett was talking about. If you oh, I love every, all these guys, but they're not actually that good. But it falls into your guy that you're going to get to, like say, like a guy like Tajay Spears, right? Like if you believe in Tajay Spears, no spoilers, and you want that guy, <laughs> right? What, say his ADP is because again, just ADP, right? Yeah. It's average draft position. There's other people you don't know where it's, you don't know who else likes that guy. And, and honestly, even ADP is a little wonky right now. Like it really hasn't gotten consistent yet. Well, we're about to put out some real consistent. We are. ADP. We are. Um, we've been working really hard at that. Yeah. Uh, conducting mock drafts with people in the nerd herd to make sure uh, that the ADP is going to be for, for what good. it's worth. Using the same platform, the startup that I just did versus this mock draft, they started two weeks apart. Roughly, I saw guys that were thirty and forty spots different from where they were last time. So that's Me, what I that's what I mean it by means you're working with a small sample size. They're still solidifying, yeah, and it's it's a big jump. Then even on like a couple of drafts can really yeah. bump somebody. And it takes just one person in your draft to mix it all up, right? It they, does they grab a guy and again team structure? People are like, man, I really need a running back here, or I really need a receiver, I really need a tight end. So like now a player goes off that you thought might have been there because of his ADP. But not real as I lies in this team structure was like, I want to complete my team. Because some people, like, they don't care about value. They care about building their starting lineup first. 
And we're like, I'm mostly, like, I'm trying to build a team, but I'm also really looking for value. Like, that's what I'm really looking for. I lean strong that way. And you'll notice by my team, I lean, especially if we're drafting in, you know, end of January, I lean strong on, I don't need to set a starting lineup today. Like, I could, if I don't have enough guys to fill a certain spot, I'm not going to panic. I can trade all off season and get that right value and, and get the players I need. But right now I care more about what's the value of the players more so than anything. That's else. why your team looks like rubbish. All right. That makes <laughs> sense. Look, this team is about the one at all. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm all about value. Like if I don't need a player, but like that player screams value. Like even though I don't need that position, I will take that player. Yeah. Whether, cause then I could trade the player I took ahead of them for better value mm-hmm. or um, I can just trade that player as well. But you know, I'm making sure that I'm not say like you said, kind of go back to where I'm where I'm saying, like, get your guy. The worst thing you do in a startup is reach for a position because you, you're like, oh man, I don't have any running backs. Yep. Which when I usually do a startup, I'm always looking at them like, oh man, I have no running backs. Yeah. Like always. Cause I like that there's no there's no value there for the most part. Once you miss on those top guys, there's no value at running back until when you find later in the draft yeah. some of these veterans, which is what I like to get, because you could plug and play a running back at any time mm-hmm. through your rookie draft. You can go out there and draft a guy and be able to play him later. So reaching for a player is a terrible, terrible decision based on your startup mock draft because you're trying to fill a positional need. Like Garrett said, most startup drafts, when you do them, your league doesn't start for minimum another month. Minimum. You have plenty of time to fill those holes with the value that you got. And mm-hmm. once the injury starts happening, that's where you start making trades. So CJ Stroud goes at three. I'm on the clock at four. This pick could probably shock a lot of people. Uh, but I'm not taking, if you listen to the show. Yeah, yeah, but I'm taking my guy and I take Justin Herbert. Yes, I take him ahead of Jalen Hurts. Yes, I take him ahead of Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, because this is my guy. He's 25 years old. He's got a rocket arm. And right now, to date, this is somebody outside of this year. He finished his quarterback 17 this year, but he got hurt. So if you look at what he um, played, which, which is weeks one through 13, because he had weeks hurt in week 14, he was QB 10. Last year, QB 11. In 21, QB2, his rookie year in 2020, QB9. He's been a quarterback one his entire career. He's got a rocket arm. He's super young. He just signed a long-term contract, and he just got a brand-new head coach, which is going to bring a new offensive coordinator in, and a quarter, a coach that has historically done very well with his quarterbacks, going all the way back to when he was a coach. I mean, when he was at the University of San Diego, uh, he got Josh Johnson to become a pretty good quarterback. Did really, really well in the conference. Led his team in passing yards in the conference. Led all kinds of statistics. Um, he was six in voting for the Walter Payton Award. Uh, so, like, he did really good there. Of course, he goes to Stanford. His first couple quarterbacks were just okay. But Andrew Luck actually had his best year under Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Harbaugh. Harbaugh. I like sorry. that. I like that. Come on, bog down. And then, you know, <laughs> San Fran, he had Alex Smith. But Alex Smith, you know, he – Alex Smith with – Smith was terrible until Harbaugh got there. And then that's when he started to turn around. So for me, new coaching staff, a player that I truly believe in. I love his arm talent. I'm playing it safe here with the court. Like I still don't, I'm still not all in on Jalen hurts. Like Mm -hmm. long-term, like I see his value within the next couple of years starting to diminish kind of like the Cam Newton effect. He he had a rough year this year. Right. I mean, um, so I I can see why there's trepidation and going back to Harbaugh. He's, he was a quarterback. He knows how to get the most out of these guys, and I would expect him to elevate his Justin Herbert's game. This, you know, it, it might not be an instant effect, but within the next couple of years, we could see Justin Herbert really ascending to that upper echelon. So for me, it's either him or like a guy like Joe Burrow, and I'm gonna take the guy who hasn't been hurt for multiple years. I, no, I, I will say, even I don't the trip that long term, but yeah, Her- you know. Herbert's, Herbert's Herbert's been nicked up, finger, it, even finger, the tr- ribs. The trepidation around Jalen Hurts, I do think, is a little overblown. Like he had a down year. He was quarterback two. Yeah, but um, the way that he wins in fantasy, sure, like, I don't, I don't believe in that. Here, here, here's a better way to say it. I am not as confident that Jalen Hurts is going to be a quarterback one eight years from now. Sure, and, and that's a better way be to true. say it. That's be true. Which is a long time. Like I'm not saying like Jalen Hurts' decline is coming anytime soon whatsoever. Right. But again, in a startup, when I'm drafting a position like this at quarterback. I want somebody that I feel comfortable about for 10 years. Sure. Which is forever in fantasy football and in life. 
You know what I mean? It's a, it's, it's a long time. So I want that comfort. I want to go away knowing that at the most important position in this game that I'm playing is covered for a long time. Right. Barring some kind of crazy twist to the story. Right. Sure. So that's why I would like, I feel good about this pick because I feel good about the player. Right. If I got Joe Burrow, I'd feel just a good, I'd feel really good about that as well. If I got, honestly, if I got like a guy like Jordan Love, I feel good about it. Mm-hmm. But I feel the best for me personally about, about Justin, Justin Herbert. Herbert. No, I, so, and I think that's totally fine. After that, um, We'll just go round by round. Like, you read the second round, I'll read sure, the first. So sure. people don't have to hear my annoying voice with my lisp uh, constantly here. <laughs> so after Justin Herbert, here goes Jalen Hurts. Then it goes Anthony Richardson, which is... Um, that, that felt early. A little me. higher than I would have expected, yeah. A yeah. little higher than I would have expected, too. Like, over Joe Burrow? Like, that's a little... Over Lamar, over... Risky. Yeah. Hey, I mean... Remember we, Lamar's we, performance in that AFC Championship game. Hey, I'm okay you with You only it. need him to play for the regular season. Peyton Manning... Did great for fantasy for years. <laughs> Didn't matter what he did in the playoffs. True statement. <laughs> so that was a shocker. It, it a was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anthony Richardson at what, six, pick six. That's pretty. That's pretty bold, but I, it's risky. But you know, we've seen him be very consistent. Very Super consistent. consistent. <laughs> yeah. so. Not injury prone. Very consistent. Super yep. consistently injured, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's going to go for the rest of his career. By the way. Of so course. As long as this podcast goes on, which is literally next week. He's going to be super consistent. He, we'll probably, be, we'll he could be in the it. XFL, <laughs> and he would be super consistent. Consistently starting in the For XFL. For the next 10 years. Because <laughs> next week is our 10-year anniversary of uh, true. Dynasty Nerds. 10 years. Oh, my God. 10-year anniversary. Been doing this podcast with Matt for 10 years. Crazy. You will about five. Yeah. Which yeah. is nuts. So, but we'll talk about that next week. So, <laughs> next on the clock is Peter uh, Bartowski. He took Justin Jefferson. It's about where he normally goes. Yep. It's about right. Right around here. And you can't argue with the fact, uh, take a guy like Justin Jefferson. But again, like now you're chasing quarterbacks after this, it which is tough. the most important. Like, and here's the thing. And here's my thought process on this, why I don't take these receivers in the first round of Superflex Leagues. Because then you're chasing quarterback. If you don't have a high pick in your rookie draft, you're almost never going to get one. Now, sometimes making these kind of picks will get you a high pick in your rookie draft. Sure. But – you're chasing the highest scoring position from there on out, and yeah. you're not getting you. You pretty much have to get lucky at that point. Uh, looking just looking down his team, he has got some nice players. He has got quarterbacks that I would not want on my team. Yeah, so I think it's kind of what you're saying is true. You know what I mean? Uh, as far as you're chasing it, he got Justin Jefferson. He's got AJ Brown. He's got TJ Hawkinson. He's got Kyle Pitts. I do not like Peter. Sorry, Peter. Chris, Chris, God, edit, edit, Chris edit Godwin. This podcast, don't that out. I don't like your team, bro. <laughs> but his quarterbacks, are, they're not great. My, Kyler Murray is his best one. Then it's Bryce Young and Aaron Rodgers. So uh, it's it's a little rough around the edges. I, I, you know what I mean? Real rough. Like yeah. if he doesn't win this year, good luck in the future. Right. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I totally agree. And and. I, I don't like to put myself in that kind of position in a startup person. I, d- I don't either. Cause then you're chasing like, cause it, and that's one thing like you have, like, unfortunately we said we don't reach in Superflex If you don't have like, you have to grab cause they're like, it's you're, a limited supply. You're you the guy, reach for you're the guy in the middle of the desert with no water. Yep. That's how you feel. Yep. It, it, you get you, desperate. Yeah. You really do. That's how I talk a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> Suffer in fucking pasture. You know, you're the guy <laughs> too with much water. too much water. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stuck in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the guy that's getting waterboarded and they want to have, have a full conversation with you real fast. <laughs> tell, I'll tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> you just grossed out a lot of people. I'm sorry. With that sound of it. That's what happens when my wife looks at me, too. So, next on the board here is Jamar Chase. So, same. Which I know you love this pick. Yeah. <laughs> Not consistent enough. This guy. I have C. Lamb ranked higher personally, and I have Amon Ross well, Brown ranked higher too. What? what? Tell your friends. That's new. Wah, wah, wah. Tell your friends. Put on a boy board. Make Putting a pay. The boy board. Boy board. <laughs> I don't speak. Say that three language. times fast. Boy board. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and and so same situation. Like you're chasing quarterbacks at that point, and we'll see what quarterbacks he ends up here uh, with. But I like his quarterback situation probably just as good as. Peters, I suppose. He, the pick he got in the seventh round, I think, really helped solidify things for him. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. agree. That does that one's that was one of the best values in the whole draft. It is. 
Yeah. And, and, we'll get there. And yeah. and Baker's not bad either. So yeah, so he gets Kirk Cousins and Baker, both yeah. pretty good. <laughs> well, God, God, spoilers. Oh yeah, look. I just said Baker. I, I said the best pick of the draft. You had to ruin it's the seventh round. Thanks for listening. I just ruined the show. You guys like, aren't people, listening like, tomorrow. Like people are gonna remember. 24 hours later, like, remember when Rich mentioned Kirk Cut? <laughs> That's the team that got him. They'll just, hey, I'm going to loot in. I'm setting up. It's kind of like a when you watch a movie, it's kind of like watching Memento. <laughs> you're, you're listening those, to it backwards, or are we going to start with the 20th back, round? One of those backward movies. Yeah, one of those movies where it shows you, like, you got to follow along. <laughs> You know, future of the past. <laughs> where you got to follow future. along. Are there <laughs> movies where you don't have to follow <laughs> yeah, along? They're in Braille. <laughs> Oh, those horses sound <laughs> Some pretty. Some movie in Braille. The, the old silent, non-existent movie, uh, right? In Braille. Don't no, have to follow No on. picture, no sound. You just Braille it. So then you still got to pay. Actually, you do still got to probably pay more attention than that. <laughs> I don't know. I can't read Braille, unfortunately. I'll practice. So uh, next on the clock here Jesus. is Harbaugh. He takes Lamar Jackson. Then Sedated Fork takes Joe Burrow, which I, I think is tremendous value. I was here. surprised Burrow fell this far. I didn't think he would get past that six, seven range. Uh, and the most recent draft I did, I think he went at four. Would you, I mean, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow are sitting on the board. You're staring at both those guys and you pick Jamar Chase. That one doesn't make sense. For, for me, I couldn't Burrow have let him go down. past six. Yeah. No, I wouldn't have either. I couldn't have let him go past six. Like, like I'm cool. Like, if you're like, I'm going to get the best wide receiver. I'm going to go get Justin Jefferson. I can live with it. I can live with it. But just knowing that. The you're going to live a rough life. Yeah. The Jamar Chase over the quarterback that's going to be throwing him the ball. It, that one doesn't make as much sense. But You're going to see Dynasty gonna... Richard at the table eating lobster and steak. And you're sitting there eating <laughs> a can of peas going, what could have been? <laughs> you're not going to be eating lobster and steak. You're eating that cheeseburger that you ordered when you pocket dialed me today. <laughs> Matt he texts me. He's like, <laughs> he he's like, enjoy that cheeseburger. I'm like, how's he doing? I'm eating a cheeseburger right now. <laughs> and it's to my. Did you hear the drive thru or something? I heard the. I, he did it twice. I had a voicemail of it. And then he called me again and he was still ordering. It's five guys. It's a long order. <laughs> it, it was a really long order. The wife had to take the kid to uh, the youngest to basketball and baseball practice. So, me and my oldest, anytime they're not here, we just get five guys every time. Were you getting, like, jalapenos added? Where'd yeah, you get? of course. Dude, man, here's my five guys order. Let's cheeseburger. No, we already heard it. <laughs> no. no, Matt's got it on voicemail. I have it on voicemail. Just cheeseburger. Just plug, it into the, just plug it into the episode, Jared. Lettuce. Yeah. He'll send it to you. Grilled onions, jalapenos, and mayonnaise. Yeah. Dude, it's just, I'm telling five guys, when it, like, national burger-wise, uh-huh. best burger in the game, hands down. I can eat it. Every time I eat it, I'm just like, I wish I had four more points. I know. Like it's that good. It is, it is a very good burger. It is so good. It would probably be my second favorite. I like Swenson's better, personally. I'm a big Swenson's guy. Cowboy Boy's good, but yeah. it's not Five Guys, unfortunately. I, I like Five Guys, too, but it would probably be runner-up for me. There's a local place here that's well-known among, amongst athletes called Ton Hall. There's okay. one in Columbus, too. They've got a fantastic okay. burger. So Five Guys is number one. Okay. Insane. So, anyways, off the burgers. And after Joe Burrow, Jared's on the clock, and he takes rookie pick one, one, one. one. So, people that are off are following along, the kickers are in place of the rookies, mm-hmm. right? So, the purple. So, purple it's a Cade York. Yeah. So, <laughs> what we did was, yeah, if you're on YouTube or if you follow the, the link, all kickers are rookie draft picks. So, Jared takes 1-1, one, one, which we expect this to be Caleb Williams. Yep. And I have no problem with this pick whatsoever. Me neither. I was uh, hoping that I would actually get a shot at that and mm-hmm. right here at the turn, and I didn't. So uh, I got sniped a little bit there. But I, I came up with fine backup plans, in my opinion. Um, so I have back-to-back picks here at 12, <clears throat> 1, 12 and 2, 1. And I went Jordan Love and then Brock Purdy. Last year's, I think they were fifth and sixth uh, mm-hmm. QBs. Yeah, fifth and sixth um, as far as fantasy points. And both of them. Brock Purdy's 24, Jordan Love's 25. These guys are super young and really just kind of coming into their own in the yeah. NFL. So these guys, uh, you know, they're not – they're kind of what I had, had talked about earlier, that if you get your guys and they're a little bit on the younger side and they still have upside, you may just be – you know, you might be getting them a half round early compared to next year. I'm, I'm guessing both of these guys, if they stay on the trajectory that they're on, are going to be talked about three or four picks ahead of where I'm taking them now. Um, it, yeah, I would guess that this was probably a little earlier than they're typically going at the moment. 
And it's funny that you pick these two guys because these are the two guys that overall at the quarterback, like in the top 15, that I'm like, eh. I'm not as high on these two guys personally as other people are. But getting two quarterbacks that you like that are young, I don't think is ever bad. I, I love getting young guys that are are coming into their own. Both of them have playoff experience now under their belt, which mm -hmm. it's it doesn't, you know, it, it's not going to show up on any stat sheet or anything like that, but there is a confidence that you get and you gain from going into playoff games, winning those big things. You know yeah. what it takes then from a, pre a preparation standpoint, from a season-long standpoint, mm -hmm. and, and then plus, you know what I mean, um, to get it done. So I do like the fact that both those guys were, were in the playoffs this year. I, I feel like they're going to go into next year with a ton of confidence. And Jordan Love was just Putting on a show. I'm Laser putting perfect. on a show. He looked fantastic. We, we've, we've talked about how much we love Love here um, love, a love. ton on this show. And and I, obviously, I had I had two picks in a row. I could have picked these guys in any order I wanted to. Sure. I made sure to pick Jordan Love first because that's how much I actually kind of believe in him. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to make it a point to, to say, mm -hmm. hey, Jordan Love belongs in this conversation in the first round. So that, that is why I took him before uh, Brock Purdy. I would 100% have taken him here too. 100%. These are two quarterbacks that – you mentioned are young have produced at a high level in fantasy football already, both quarterback once, you know, one's mm -hmm. Mr. Relevant quarterback one, Jordan love top six fantasy quarter quarterback. Brock Purdy is currently about to play in the super bowl. Mm -hmm. If you don't think Brock Purdy is going to be the long-term answer there in San Francisco on a deal, then I don't tell you. And if Brock Purdy beats the Kansas city chiefs, which they very well could easy. And he's a super bowl champion quarterback. Yeah. You could, it's pretty safe to say he's the quarterback in San Francisco with Kyle Shannon, who has a yeah. history of producing. We can sit here and talk about Jim Harbaugh. Kyle Shannon has even a longer history of producing high-level fantasy football quarterbacks, which is what we want. So, like, I love both those picks. Like, And I feel okay taking those guys over ahead of a guy like Trevor Lawrence. Attention, Dynasty nerds. Want to play Dynasty like a pro? Check out FFPC, where serious Dynasty leagues have thrived since 2010. You can dive into a world of over 1,500 le leagues with stakes ranging from $100 all the way up to an elite $5,000 league. FFPC isn't just a game. It's a community with unique formats like TriFlex and year-round trading. It keeps the fantasy spirit alive all year. Here's my favorite thing about FFPC leagues. They stand the test of time. They've never had a single dynasty league fold thanks to their orphan season. When you join an FFPC league, you can count on it staying around. They've com completely revamped their dynasty for sale pages now on the web and app, making it easier to scout and snag the perfect dynasty team. Have you ever dreamed of turning a diamond in the rough into a champion? FFPC. See, Orphans offers that exact thrill. Join the ranks of savvy managers at FFPC. Use our code NERDS for $25 off. Visit myffpc.com. Explore the Dynasty landscape. Find your next challenge. The FFPC, where your Dynasty journey begins. Remember, that's code NERDS for your special discount on your next league. I just want to go back real quick, back to before you start reading the rest of the second round picks, you go through okay. them here, is that pick 110 of Joe Burrow, mm -hmm. before we got in that burger talk, sure. I want to say is, I, per talk. I personally there would have tried to get really aggressive. Probably, honestly, starting at pick nine. I would have started getting real aggressive about trying to trade back up into the first for my second round to get Joe Burrow there, by the way. Like, I probably would have said, like, hey, you want my second, third, and my... Like twenty five first, like right. I, I would have tried to find a way to get Joe Burrow there. You're saying in trade in trade scenarios in a startup, yeah, yeah. I, Maybe I, not all that cost. I mean, when guys like when when guys like that fall, those are the ones that you should try to go up and get. Absolutely. Um, if we're gonna hop into the way back machine and try to travel back in time, we did gl glance over Lamar Jackson pretty quickly as well. I wouldn't mind touching on him and and just to ask the question and and hear your guys' reaction. Do you guys have any sort of trepidation in the back of your mind about Lamar long term? Just knowing that the fact that he's had such such a small amount of success in the playoffs, as far as he, he's he's not the type of guy that it seem it seems like he's not the type of guy that can overcome a deficit in the playoffs, right? It, just in general, 
the, they play from ahead an awful lot, right? Right. And and they're really good at playing if, uh, playing from ahead. But when they get behind, it, it is a bit of an issue. And it's not that he can't throw. It's just he's very inconsistent. He n- he overthrows a lot. He is inconsistent. It's just taking away his and maybe their best weapon in in him throwing the ball because he's their best weapon. You know what I mean? Running the ball. Yeah, he, him running the ball is almost the most deadly uh, weapon. Doesn't help when you only run the ball five times. Right. They abandoned the run. It was a weird. It was a very weird game plan. Blah blah Terrible blah. Terrible game plan. It, it or, was uh, atrocious. But I'm, I'm not. There talking, were a lot of bad I, breaks. I don't want to talk about but, just this game because yeah. I don't. I don't, for fantasy purposes, it, there's no relevance to it. But I do want to ask the question of: Is there a question of your guy in your guys' mind about his long term um, I, I viability? <laughs> not, not for me as much because there's only you know this is arguably the best the quarterback position has been in a while, and we still only have NFL wise. I'm guessing. 18 to 20 that teams feel really good about, you know, so I feel like, and especially with him just signing this new long-term extension and all of that, I, I don't see anything on the near horizon within the next four to five years that would really give me any pause as far as being willing to take him in the first round. I feel good about Lamar for the next, like you mentioned, like probably five years. Yeah. That being said though, for me, Lamar Jackson's, not the player I'm going to draft. Personally. I would have taken Burrow ahead of him. I have zero Lamar Jackson yeah. shares. And again, I have some trepidation about that long-term ability, right? Yeah. Like once if Lamar loses his rushing ability, which is just going to be a natural occurrence, like it's going to happen. Like he's not going to get past 30 as a rushing quarterback. He's on a second contract. Like that hurts his fantasy football value because he's not an overall passer. Now, listen, he did it. He was the highest fantasy scorer of all time. He threw for, what, 50 touchdowns that year? It was a lot. The, yeah. It not, was a lot. Yeah, not not this year, whatever his A MVP, couple of years ago. His, his first MVP. We'll see if he pulls the second one this year. So, for me, here, like, I would, one, I would have taken Joe Burrow ahead of Lamar Jackson. Um, but, two, this is where I would actively trade down for somebody like Juan Lamar, and I'd, be, I'd feel way more comfortable, personally, getting the plus – with Jordan Love, the plus with a Brock Purdy. Because, yeah. again, I feel more comfortable with that long-term value. Like, when I, I draft I, a yeah. quarterback this high, I just don't want to have to worry about quarterback for a long time on my team. Like, I want to just grab the value of my rookie draft. May have a bad year because of injuries. Then I luck into a quarterback that way. Or right. I, I see a guy that I want to trade for, like, and go get, like, a Baker Mayfield beforehand or something along those lines. Yeah. But, like, I don't want to worry about that position until, like, my team's in a complete rebuild. Or on top of that, when the rest of my team around my quarterback starts to get bad, I still have a really good quarterback. Now, I could trade for a huge haul, right. essentially. So, Matt took Jordan Love at 12. At 2-1, you take Brock Purdy. Yeah. Garrett, go ahead and pick it up from there. So, Jared is back on the clock. And he goes with the second pick in the draft. So, he took the first pick in the first round, the second pick in the second round. He kind of mentioned to us, his plan would be to take those top two quarterbacks and Caleb Williams and Drake May. We'll see how things work out. And I want to say he did tell us that when the draft was over, he's like, we should do a rookie draft and do that afterwards based on these picks to let you know I would pick um, Caleb Williams and Drake May. Yeah. Because that because not knowing what he's going to pick affects the way I drafted here coming up, and I'm going to tell you why sure. when I'm on the clock. But not knowing what – because at this time, I'm like, oh, he took the 1-1 one, one, and 1-2. One, like, okay, Marvin is Harrison, he doing – Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. Or is he doing Drake May and Caleb Williams just going two young quarterbacks? I had no idea right. at this point. But I was like, oh, that, and the, my initial gut was like, oh, he's probably going to take two quarterbacks. But like, oh, it's still a good start if he gets Caleb Williams and um, Marvin Harrison. Let's see how he, how this goes forward to kind of tell me what I need to know. But for like me in a startup, like I'm paying attention to how everybody else is building their team too, right? right. Like, that's important. It's important to see what other people are doing because – that does affect how you may pick. If you see there's no running backs on six teams behind you and you're not picking for 12 picks, you have no running back, you might want to grab somebody in that tier that's a running back knowing that that tier is going to disappear for you. So I just want to say going forward, afterwards, Jared did say those two quarterbacks, but going in at this point, I had no idea what he was going to do with those picks. For, For what it's worth for me personally, while I loved him taking one of those picks there, I don't know that I could have done both. 
Yeah, um, you're building in a lot of risk. It, there's a lot of risk, and and even though I like a lot of the play, like it's interesting looking through his team. I like a lot of the players on his team, but for me, there's no cohesion here because there's a lot of good like veteran players, but then so much risk at the quarterback that will those two things come together at the same time? And I'm not sure. So for me, I would have rather had one of those two picks be a Dak Prescott, a, a guy that I feel is a little bit more steady as opposed to two rookie quarterbacks. Now, could this boom? It absolutely could. Be. If both these guys hit, I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, if he gets Pat Mahomes and Justin Herbert, he gets picked. He's one, loving one, two, life. Which, but, is, which is a fair risk. And I, I'll back him up on here this as well is the upside is through the roof, right? Through Two the roof. good quarterbacks absolutely. that I absolutely like. And at the same time, where you said there is a lot of risk, the most insulated po- players in position are these top 10 rookie quarterbacks, right? Sure. Like if you if, if Drake May gets drafted at 1-2, and he goes out and just has an okay year, he doesn't lose a ton of value in the community, sure. right? Like that's an insulated pick. So by doing that, like – He's he is, yes he's taking some risk, but he could be he'd be able to recoup and and pivot off of that one two off of Drake May if need be and go out and get a quarterback that's you know probably just as like if, if say Drake May's okay right like mm-hmm. say he's Jared Goff which is okay you could probably get Jared Goff plus or Drake May because those those pickets are so insulated within the first two years sure. now when you enter year three. That insulation starts to burn off like you're reorbiting the earth or re-entering the earth. But in for the first two years, I feel like those picks are very I'll say it for the five hundredth time. Insulated. insulated. So I don't uh, I didn't hate it as much. I know he's taking a risk. I don't hate it. I'm but just saying gonna risk, it is it is very risky. You risk it like something like this in a sure. year where like the quarterback hype is really high. So sedated fork then comes back, gets Trevor Lawrence at pick two three. So he's got Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence. I think that's a real steady yep start uh, a real ideal start to a, a, a super flex definitely team. when trevor lawrence sure. is your quarterback two and not your not quarterback one. one great value and you're talking about a player like you're buying a small dip here right like mm-hmm. he was going one seven one eight this time last year up until the season started that's where he was going right. so you you got real good value at quarterback and i would absolutely if i would him swept up like swept in there and got um trevor lawrence as well uh, so Harbaugh, he comes in. He takes the first tight end sexy, off the board. Sexy Sam. Woo! Two four. Now we did preface this. This is a tight end premium league, so obviously gives a nice little bump. Would you guys here at two four? Would you guys have been willing to take Sam Laporta here? Because I'm torn. Up. Part of me loves it, and part of me feels like it's it's pretty high. Listen, it, it, he has proven to be. A huge difference maker, yeah. As a, as a rookie, so really, no, I, I don't think it's too high. I would definitely take him wherever I needed to in order to ensure that I would get him. Sure, you know what I mean that that's get your guy. This is one of those guys that you're probably taking a round or a half a round early. To did, get did you consider guy. him at two one? Because you're not far away from here. I didn't, but okay. I wanted to get two quarterbacks. Okay, I had I had locked in on that uh, on the turn. If there's two quarterbacks there, I'm going to get them. Gotcha. Um, so I, I wasn't I wasn't gonna pick him at two one, but I when he went two four I went damn yeah. you know what I mean yeah. like one of those sure um, so I don't think I it's it's early it's early but go get your guy that's yeah. how I it's feel. early it's not too early but it's early yeah. because you're getting the one one at the position in your in right. in, in some people's eyes I, I would agree the news that Ben Johnson is going back to the Huge. Lions is absolutely massive yeah. for him. And honestly, the only player I would have, there's two players here that I would have probably taken ahead of them for sure. Would have been the two receivers. CeeDee Lamb and Amon Ross St. Brown because they're in my tier one, right? So I'm getting a tier one receiver and, or actually technically tier two because we have Justin Jefferson in his own tier. But then I have Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, and Amon Ross St. Brown. So like, the chance I could have got C.D. Lamb, who was the number one fantasy receiver overall this year, and could be next year, like that would have been hard to pan up. Like I'd rather have C.D. Lamb and Trey McBride or T.J. Hawkinson than like let's say A.J. Brown and Sam Laporta. If that makes mm-hmm. sense, but that's probably even a worse combo. Let's say somebody like Nico Collins or Puka Nakua. 
and Sam Laporta. But anytime you get a guy number one in a position, super young, super talented, it's not a bad pick. And that's what yep. you really want to avoid, a bad pick. So it's early, but it's not a bad pick. Hey, guys, let me tell you about our friends at Sleeper. Guess what? Our app is the mini is live Ooh. on Sleeper right now. The Dynasty so GM, pretty. you can use the analyzer. That you can use nice. the, uh, the the trade calculator. And my favorite thing is the inbox, right, where all your trades from all your Sleeper leagues are right there. You can actually push trades through the actual Sleeper app. And right now, we could be more excited to be partners with them. And right now, if you don't know, they are doing DFS. And I know how many people that play Dynasty play DFS as well. And right now, there's not a better place to play DFS than Sleeper. They're offering up to 100 times their, your entry, the highest payout in the whole DFS market right now. You can track your fantasy players and your Sleeper picks in real time. All you got to do is choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame, live in-game, or even across different sports. Pick more or less than the predicted stats, and only on Sleeper you can get up to 100 times your payout. You can share with your friends and get reward together. Make sure you use that promo code NERD so our friends know that friends sent them their way. Oh, um, no way. <laughs> and get your deposit match and have Lindsay. a good time. You know, have all your DFS, all of your fantasy leagues, and now even a Dynasty GM in one spot is fully operational inside Sleeper right now. And then when you're a Nerd Herd member, you get that full access to that. And remember, Dyn- you also want to download the Dynasty Nerds app because they're both in there. Check it out. Check our friend Sleeper. Check out the DFS. Use that promo code NERDS. Get your whole estate. <laughs> <set>. <laughs> Uh, so next, just Josh goes with CeeDee Lamb. So got a nice, you know, in their prime wide receiver duo with Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb. Still doesn't have that quarterback. Uh, it's tough to go the first couple rounds without getting a quarterback. But if you're going to do it, that's a pretty good duo to walk away with at a position that usually has decent longevity. Here's my beef. Yes, you have two really good receivers. Jamar Chase, who's never been a top three fans receiver. He's not consistent enough. And then CeeDee Lamb. Absolutely. You had to say really good and then put a caveat as to why it wasn't good. I will forever. Get, change your attitude, buddy. <laughs> and that is that is fantastic. That is good. That might be good enough, what you put around them, to sneak you into the playoffs. You know what that's not good enough to do? Win a championship if you don't have the quarterbacks. It's just not. You need those high-scoring players. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be difficult. Kirk Cousins was a top-five guy before he went down, so... He, 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 was able he to, recovers, but I'm saying yeah. I'm nervous at that point. Yeah, like, gotcha. like, you having Brock Purdy and Jordan Love would absolutely dominate CeeDee Lamb and Jamar Chase's point totals. Dominate them. Like, you have a better chance of walking yourself in the playoff and be able to do something right. in there by no, having I, two good quality quarterbacks like that than he does having just those two receivers. I, I, I totally get it. Yeah. Again, I think he recovers yeah. pretty solid here. So, like, mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think his draft strategy was solid. I'm just saying, like, that's not the way. That's, a, again, you're, a lot of risk. You're nervous. If you make that pick, you're nervous. Because now the control is in your other league mates, right? Like, right. if they want to start grabbing positional value at quarterback, then you could fall into, like, the fact that he got Kirk Cousins that late was he, he that's, he got lucky then. Yep. You know, it could have gone real sideways there if he didn't add Kirk Cousins to that roster. But all in all, He's got two stud receivers. He shouldn't have any problem. He had to trade one of those for that quarterback that he wanted to get. So then we do have back-to-back quarterbacks uh, for Peter and the Beave. We've got Kyler Murray at 2-6 and Dak Prescott at 2-7. Uh, for me, I like both of those quarterbacks fairly well. I think they're both uh, good upside players. Dak Prescott a little longer in the tooth than, than Kyler, but... You don't have as many injury worries to an extent. He, he's he's had his own injury problems as well. Uh, but I I had no problem with both those guys. I think that's a, a perfect range to take those quarterbacks. And, and, and this is a tough decision. You know, I personally would have gone with Dak Prescott. Um, just I like the high-end ability. I like, mm-hmm. you know, obviously he's a little bit older, but um, – just the consistency that I, I think you're going to get from a guy like Dak, Dak Prescott compared to Kyler Murray, who I think is going to be great when he's available, but I, he's shown basically every single year that he's going to miss a little bit of time at some sure. point. Um, so I, I do think Dak had some weird kind of couple of years where ankle injuries and goofy things like that kind of recovered yeah, the from hand that. Thing. Yeah, right. But Kyler Murray always seems to, and his playing style lends itself to it that does. as well. Um, getting, getting dinged up and injured. So, I would have gone Dak, 
before Kyler, but I can see why this is the range where they should be going. Yeah, I think it's the right spot. Uh, at 2-8, uh, Devi to Dynasty took Amon Ross St. Brown, so kind of that last receiver that we kind of have in that tier yeah. uh, at the moment. Great pick. And then, uh, Rich, you're up. You want to tell the folks what you did? Yeah, I took rookie pick 1-3. And I took this here because knowing that Jared had taken 1-1, one, 1-2, one, one, mm-hmm. not knowing, like I said, not knowing what he was going to do. But the way I looked at it is like, hey, this gives me a – I was really, really pumped to get this pick because I said – by getting one three here, this gives me a lot of flexibility with my draft. Because I know if Jared doesn't take a quarterback here coming back around, he's probably taking those two quarterbacks first, right? If I if he doesn't take that quarterback. If not, I'm getting somebody who I view as a very high end wide receiver one possible in Marvin Harrison Jr. And worst case, I was like, worst case, if not, I get a young quarterback in Drake May. Knowing that puts me in position later in the draft, I can just take a veteran quarterback to back it up, whether it be Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield. I was like, I'll just grab one of those guys mm-hmm. if he takes, if he goes quarterback right after this pick. Because if he does, then I'm pretty positive he's taking Marvin Harrison Jr. But I was like, this gives me some flexibility here. I could pivot. And I was like, you know, even at the same time, this gives me some flexibility to the point of, okay, if he does take Marvin Harrison Jr., I could also now take this one three for somebody that really does that missed out on quarterback and possibly trade back a couple of picks. And this could fill my tight end. And, and at the same time, like in this kind of draft, I could go, okay, even though the, the value is on a player, if I have a player in a tier, like I could build my team this way. I could take Brock Bowers here. I take middle league neighbors here. Maybe I like Roman Dunes a more who knows, or I could just trade back like this pick at one, three, no matter what will hold a ton of value when it comes to, the, the rookie draft, but at the same time, this gives me crazy flexibility mm-hmm. to really let the draft start to come to me and build a team that I want to see fit. So I thought this was a really good mm-hmm. pick to expand my team to build a really quality team. Now, after finding out later that it's going to be Marvin Harrison Jr., and I kind of found that out a little He's bit earlier in May, right? He's, He's saying, taking Drake May. Yeah, so your pick. So if we yep. get Marvin Harrison Jr., like, I feel really good yeah. of how this panned out. So I took rookie pick one three was actually a stack to get here, but at the same time I was like, oh, if it doesn't go here, I'm gonna get Amon Ross St. Brown, and I'll build my team around. And for what it's worth, I pick in two picks. Had you not, I would have taken pick one three. Yeah, there's no way that was not gonna get. There was no like B. John Robinson, Brees Hall, guys like that, Chris McCaffrey, Tua, like even Justin Fields, like they weren't on my radar. It was one three or um, like as I got closer, I was like, man, I hope I get Amon Ross St. Brown. Or 1-3. And I was really hoping I wasn't in a position to get, like, Dak Prescott or Kyler Murray, to be honest with you. Sure. I was really hoping. Get those second are the, quarterback. Those were the two guys that I I was dead-eyed on. Like, I really want Amon or I really want 1-3. And, of course, they all just went right there in line right before yep. you went. It worked out. So, That's yeah. That's how that works, man. Yep. All right. Next pick off the board, we got the first running back, C. Polly, took B. John Robinson. And once you took 1-3, I knew – even though I, I would have liked to have had Marvin Harrison Jr., I knew that I was getting a top two running back at that point. And normally, I don't love to take running back in the second round. But typically, in most drafts, these two guys are going much higher. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually, B. John Robinson's going towards the end of the first round. Brees Hall's right early, middle, second round. So these two guys usually aren't available. At this spot, I'm looking at McCaffrey, Gibbs, those guys. So to have these two guys available and know, especially in a year where I don't care how many draft picks I get, I'm not guaranteed to be able to get a running back in this class. Mm -hmm. I was a little more apt to take a swing at running back early this year than I was in other years. So uh, B. John Robinson went at pick 210, which is the right pick, and Brees Hall. And the more I look at it, even since doing our episode, those two guys are in their own tier for me. I can't imagine taking CMC. Can't imagine taking Gibbs. I can't imagine taking any guys over one of those two. We said that before. Did we? I couldn't remember. So I, know, I just I wanted did. to clarify. I can't imagine taking any of those guys over one of those. hundred percent. They're in their own tier. Yep. And where I say I never take a quarterback running back in the first round, mm-hmm. I really don't love taking running backs in a second, but 100% that these were the right two picks. Like this screams... Two super young guys, yep. two unbelievably talented guys. If you are going to take a running back, these are the kind of guys that you pray fall to you. Now, 
the dream scenario is you pick at like three one, three two, and one of those guys are there. Sure, but I would I would have taken Brees Hall one hundred percent if I was you as well here too, because I'm getting arguably the number one guy again at his position in the back end of the draft that it will hold still unbelievable trade value if your team starts to fall apart mid year and you yep. don't like the overall build. You have an asset that you know you're going to get a very solid return on regardless. Yeah. So I love the pick. Um, in the back of my mind too. I knew I was like, I probably do want another quarterback, but I'm a guy that likes Tua and I like Justin Fields. I'm also going to bet that Tristan doesn't go with three quarterbacks start. <laughs> yes, that could it happen? Yes, sure. It could. I did an Air Force. It could. Like, it's definitely possible. I did it. But I'm going to gamble a little bit that he doesn't do that, even though I still wanted Brees no matter what. That was also in the back of my mind that a little bit of extra insurance. And that's where paying attention to your draft really pays off because you're like, Okay, I want this player, but this guy has this guy doesn't have well gamesmanship. He's probably going to take it, but he does have two of the guys that I think's better value here. So the odds of that player being there over this player are significantly higher. So it was a, right. it was well played and well thought out there by seeing that he did take a quarterback first, and the odds of him in a startup, knowing he's not going to be for a long time, going right. quarterback quarterback again, were real slim. I did it in the Air Force League, and I took C.J. Stroud because I it screamed it was value just to way me too in much the third value. round. Yep. So Tristan Cook took took Tua uh, at two twelve, so he went with the quarterback quarterback start. Fortunately, Matt will let you get to the third round. He did not take a third quarterback. He did not. But let's 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 pause to talk about this for a second because we're at about fifty seven minutes. Right of course now. we are. He said we'll get through like four or five rounds. Yeah. We've gotten through two. So I don't think we should start this round. If you guys, I think we should. You think so? This will be a little bit of a longer show because we'll probably get a little bit more in depth over the next four to six rounds as well, and then get through. I mean, we literally got seventeen more rounds to go for the next show. I was going to say, so re- buckle your seat, go gonna... the lawn, go down the snowboard hill. Ma- this well, a maybe bit we even move it to the nerd herd. Maybe, maybe we end it with the nerd herd. No, nah, we'll just keep going. All right. Okay. All right. So here we are. Uh, third round, first pick. Tristan's up. Um, he's going to go Christian McCaffrey with the first, uh, the first pick in the third round. And at this point, I do think, you know, he is such a difference maker that even even though that he's he's a little bit older, I understand the pick, right? He's yep. got he's got Patrick Mahomes, he's got his second quarterback in Tua, and now he's putting a a, a nice centerpiece uh there on the running back position. An MVP type of guy. He yep. you know, he's building a roster that is for sure going to compete year now. year one right now. And why not go out and get Christian McCaffrey? And and that's important too when you're drafting here. When you once you and we kind of talked about this before in Ohio Dynasty League. Mm-hmm. Like this is, where, and I'd end up taking Christian. And I was like, that's where my draft pivoted to. Right. Okay, I am now going to build a team where I want to make sure I can grab youth where I can for value. But I'm building a team now that's going to win now. Right, and that's important because if you're building a team for the pu- future and you know that you're not taking any veterans unless there's a veteran that you think you could trade later. But once you make a pick like this of Christian McCaffrey, you know which, again, you're going to get good value because there's going to be older players that are going to help you win now because that's how dynasty drafts work. It's easy to draft a team year one that can win now because you can grab good veteran value. But once you make a pick like this, you are trying to win now. Absolutely. All right, so the next pick is is you, Garrett. So go yeah. ahead and uh, take the reins there on your pick. Yeah, so like I mentioned before, I knew I wanted either two or Justin Fields there. I felt real comfortable with getting them as a third round pick. Uh, I, I, I see them both as end of the second round values guys. So getting either one of them in the third for me was totally fine. I was going to let Tristan choose for me, which one I got, he ended up taking Tua. So then that, that put me with Justin Fields. I mentioned it on some earlier shows. I still have Justin Fields higher than probably consensus. Uh, cause I do feel like wherever he goes, he's going to produce, you know, we mentioned before one of the seemingly at the time, one of the worst case scenarios was the Tennessee Titans that he ends up going to. Well, they got a good offensive mind there. Uh, it, it looks like a, a much brighter situation now than it, than it might have before. So I, I think wherever he goes, he's going to be have some level of success, uh, especially for fantasy purposes with his running upside. So uh, I took him with my third pick. All right, so moving on to the next pick. Um, who is this? C. Polly, 24, um, picked Jameer Gibbs, which, you know, at this point in the draft – if you're going to look for running back, now this is second running back, you're looking for explosive guys. And obviously, Jameer Gibbs, is he's going to be splitting time, but, man, does this guy have some juice in his legs. Yeah, he, he is an exciting player. If there's somebody 
that's young that could turn into a CMC. In my opinion, it's a guy like Jameer Gibbs. Um, so I understand the allure and kind of why you want to go out and get a guy like this because he's he's special and he's explosive, and he can he can make dudes miss, and he just has a very unique ability to I think stop and start with extreme explosion Mm -hmm. and and when you're making you know uh nfl linebackers just kind of look silly good nfl linebackers on san francisco fred werner and stuff like that look silly and 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 do some of the things jameer gibbs does i i think he's a a special special talent um and and i told i like that i mean i i like this pick a lot yeah it was a pick i was kind of hoping like i'm up next i was like man gibb falls that's right i'll have you know i'll have Marvin Harrison Jr., Justin Herbert, Jameer Gibbs. Like, I like that core. It's a good young I, trio, I like that core. Sure. Again, not knowing 100% it would be Marvin Harrison Jr., but, like, that was what you were leaning. Or Drake Nate. And I was like, so, then I was like, I can get Malik Neighbors something if I need to as well. Mm-hmm. But we'll see how it plays out. So, Gibbs goes, and I'm on a clock. Yep. I take Garrett Wilson. So, I was looking here. I was like, okay, Garrett Wilson, A.J. Brown, possibly Jared Goff. But I actually had a plan at quarterback. Knowing that, I'd be able to get my guy – the next round. Like, mm-hmm. I just felt very confident I was going to be able to get a guy yeah. that I wanted next round. So I was like, nope, not going to reach on Jared Goff. I can get somebody who I think has equal upside to him or v- somewhat value. And so it came down to A.J. Brown and Garrett Wilson. And I just went ahead and took Garrett Wilson because I wanted, I got a little bit younger. Um, I think he's a transcendent player that could be tra- – that's a little too gloaty. Um, a, a very a high upside guy. player. And I – and. For him to get 1,000 yards with the visible quarterback play he had last year showed me what kind of player he can be. And I expect him to even grow even more next year with a guy like Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he he is one of these young players that has the skill set, I think, to ascend to the upper echelon or be nipping at the 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 heels heels, of that upper echelon pretty quickly. He could be CeeDee Lamb. How CeeDee Lamb didn't start there, but he could end there pretty quickly. And, you know, having Justin Herbert, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Garrett Wilson – like, I feel very good about, you know, I like to build around young receivers yep. and young quarterbacks in my startup draft. I, le- I want to grab that tight end where I can, but, like, again, I want to grab him when he's the right pick. Now, I don't want to reach for the tight end, but I'll figure it out, you know. So having those two receivers now, I'm okay. I got my quarterback who's 25, and I got two receivers that are under the age of 23 that have high, very upside. Marvin Harrison Jr. could end up being wide receiver one overall. And Garrett Wilson, I feel pretty good about potentially being a wide receiver one as well. So I feel mm-hmm. very good about that. All right, so moving on to the next pick in the draft. So 3-5, um, Debbie to Dynasty. I, I don't have a full name, but Debbie to Dynasty, I think is the, the gist of it. Uh, picked Jared Goff. And obviously, some people might scoff at this a little bit and, and say that's a bit high. I, I you know, he was a top seven guy last year. He's 27 years old. Ben Johnson, we already mentioned, it's coming back next year. So he'll he'll have him in that offense for, is that the third year? Third year in a row, Third right? year, yep. Mm-hmm. And all those pieces are coming back. So this is going to be a nice little offense. I would expect very similar production from Jared Goff next year. And for him to get Jared Goff as his second quarterback, he has Jalen Hurts. Uh, this, this team has Jalen Hurts. As their first quarterback, I, I think is really nice, and he's paired with Amon Ross St. Brown, who, which was his second round draft pick, which is a really nice stack to have. Yeah, I love it. I I love this pick. I love the player. I think it's it's great value. He's not go, again. He's not going anywhere. Nope. Not Detroit at Absolutely all. Not. And same. Ex- I love offenses to stay intact. Yep. You know, it's like Brady got better and better because he was in the same system. You know, like those system court like that means a ton to these quarterbacks because it helps them grow tremendously. Well, Baker's had nine offensive coordinators <laughs> yeah. in the and, past and it, seven years. And that is really hard for quarterbacks. So they have to go it's, in and learn a new system. Everybody else around them. So they have all well, those guys Yeah, I was going to say, you're learning the system. You're learning little nuances from from all your new wide receivers. The terminology. Exactly. The, and it's just like, hey, does this guy break it five or is it five and a half yards in, on this route? You know, it, the, just the little tiny details that you have to nail all this stuff. And He's not going to have to have it. Jared Goff is not going to have to have any sort of learning curve. And he's got all pros around him, yeah. and they're all coming back. So to me, that just that's a great value pick. Not maybe a sexy name in the community for some, but to me, again, I considered him over Garrett Wilson, but just knowing I can get a player probably later, I, I hesitated. So, all right, moving on to the next pick at one or at three six, uh, Tyreek Hill. Um, does this? 
feel a little early for a guy that's talking about retirement in a year or so? Or I, I, I could or go either you, way. Do you get it because he's it. such like, a difference maker? It's, it's a win. Not, same thing. Christian McCaff- It's a Christian yeah. McCaffrey pick. Same it thing. Is. So, th- so this player or this team has got Anthony Richardson as their as their quarterback, there, and then Dak Prescott, and then Tyreek Hill. So I don't love. I think the mixed message I'm getting from these. If picks. it was Hurts, Prescott, and Hill, yeah, it would have felt a little different. It, yeah. So I think they're taking AJ Brown. I think they're ask. I think they're asking and hoping a lot of Anthony Richardson. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Judge it based off of the the other. Uh, other players that they picked throughout the, r- the rest of the draft, basically. Um, so anyway, Tyreek Hill, middle of the third round, it's where he's kind of going, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I just don't know that I would do it. Uh, he I, said, again, I think to me, sorry, Garrett. No, you're good. Is he sets his team up the same way that the Christian McCaffrey pick set up. He's like, okay, if Anthony Richardson hits, I already got Dak. Like, I'm now going to build a team that's going to win now. And that's exactly what he ended up doing. I, I think you can set yourself up and maybe get a better, or not a better, but a younger player with very similar upside in a guy like A.J. Brown, Brown that gets picked next. Um, so so at 3'7", at A.J. Brown, 26 years old, total stud, and this was Peter Bartowski's pick. So he went Justin Jefferson, Kyler Murray, A.J. Brown. Love the pieces. Wish there was a little bit more emphasis on the quarterback early, but you can't do both. You know what I mean? You can't right. get these guys and have emphasis on the quarterback right. early. So um, the next is the one four. Just Josh. Yeah, I was gonna say it's the one four. Okay, just Josh picked the one four, and then Harbaugh picked Nico Collins at at three nine. Great value here, right? I mean, this is a guy that we we all kind of like when he was playing last year. He was really connecting with C.J. Stroud and emerged. We at, at one point said, "Hey, this guy's worth a first. Go out and get him." And, uh, you know, a lot of people probably laughed at us about that, but I, I think he is. I, I think he is. But when you say value, no, I guess yeah, there are some I look guys. at li- right. literally Thanks. all three receivers that went right in a row after him are all three I would have taken ahead of Nico Collins. Oh, yeah. Now, that's not disparaging Nico Collins. He's probably more of a fourth-round guy than a third-round guy. He's, yeah, and there's just, it's just way yeah. more upside here right behind him than Nico. All right, well, let's get into it. So uh, 310, Puka Nakua, right? Rookie of the year uh, from everyone else. It's not, not formally been announced, but um, rookie of the year candidate, Puka Nakua, definitely fantasy rookie of the year candidate. I think Stroud will get it. Yeah, yeah it's him or Stroud, but um, Stroud. <laughs> it's him or Stroud, but it's Stroud. But it's Stroud. <laughs> <laughs> so, Puka, I mean, Puka obviously has come out, special connection there with, with him and Matthew Stafford. He is tough to bring down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you get the ball in this guy's hands, he's going to make some good stuff happen. So I, I like this pick. He's he's young, and, and you can't really go wrong. I, th- I think in that Sean McVay offense, having a guy like him that's going to get peppered with targets um, week in and week out, we've seen the Coop, this is a Cooper Cup clone, right, except he's he's even harder to take down in the open field. Um, so Puka Nakua, nice pick here. At 311, um, Jared ended up picking his first real pick. Um, went Chris Alave here. So this kind of probably solidified if if we didn't already know what his intentions were with the first two picks. This kind of told you. Yeah, when he when he went out and, and picked Chris Alave with the third pick instead of taking literally anyone off the now, board. I will say here that I still wasn't 100%. It wasn't until his next pick that I was 100% got Marvin Jr. When he didn't take, Jr. didn't take Watson was, or somebody like that. Yeah, so the fact that he took Alave here, I was like, oh, man, he can go Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., Chris Alave. I was like, that's a good start too. Like, but I, I knew for my personal team, whatever he did in the fourth round there, then I knew like if he, if he goes quarterback there, then he's probably doing Marvin Harrison, Chris Alave. If he does not, I have Marvin Harrison jr. And that's, again, that gave me that kind of flexibility on my team. Either way, how's yeah. it going to go forward and feel comfortable. So I didn't know till the next round they had Marvin Harrison Jr. Real quick, we glossed over something real quickly, and I do want to emphasize it. Just Josh, he went with Chase and C.D. Lamb, and you talked about how he had one four. That's more than likely his first quarterback. That's that's more than likely Jaden Daniels right I, there. Didn't he put in a group chat that he was taking Brock Bowers at four? I think that was sedated fork that said he was taking uh, with okay. one of those two picks. So yeah, he probably got Jaden Daniels here, which is correct. So that was probably his first quarterback off the board more like more than likely. Could it be? Uh, you know, one of these receivers, it's it's possible. 
But uh, the way his team's built, yeah, it's 100% probably going to be Jaden Daniels. Yeah, so I just wanted to throw that in there as we're looking at it. That's the most likely scenario. Okay. Yep. And then, Matt, your last, your p- first last pick in the third round, but it's going to be the last pick of the show. Last pick of the show. Um, so, yeah, 312. I want Jalen Waddle. Listen, he's, he offers a ton of upside. Obviously, we, we didn't get the production that we wanted this year. Tyreek Hill was vacuuming up everything. Um but he's still a high end guy. He's 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 in a great offense, and Tyreek Hill is bound to slow down here eventually. But if not, he's already mentioned, you know, retirement after maybe next season. So it's it's one of those it's one of those waiting game type of things. I think you're going to get solid production out of Jalen Waddle in the meantime, and high end stuff once mm-hmm. once he's the man. Agree. All right. So that's it for this show. Um, again, don't forget out there. Download the Dynasty Nerds app. You get the Dynasty GM, which is what it's called. And you get so many tools in there, but you also get a mock draft. And once you import your leagues, remember, all your rookie picks are right in there. So, you know, if you join the Nerd Herd, not only do you get access to the film room, the Nerd Score, but you get access to all our tools as well. And the, these kind of tools are free on the app. So if you download the app, you can use the app for free. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just limited. But the mock draft is definitely wide open there. Uh, so if you make sure you get out there. Download the Dynasty GM or Dynasty Dynasty Nerds app. It's on all your app stores and play around in mock draft and see kind of how you would feel and where you feel comfortable to pick there. If you enjoyed this show and any other shows that we do, make sure you get in that uh, iTunes store and or the podcast area and leave us a rating review. We appreciate it. Definitely this time of the year really does help out the show. Uh, if you got a one star review, keep that to yourself. <laughs> but uh, make sure you know. What's funny is like when I say put a uh, review out there, people will like the reviews will go up. You know, don't know what they are because they you know, if they don't comment, put a little comment in there too. Like I love that's my like I check those probably every like three days. If you want to send a personal message to Rich, yeah. that's the way to do it. That's the way. I do don't it. read the comment. The, the one only comments you I do, do no every day. no for the podcast reviews I read all those comments. Yeah. Yeah. And your one in your hating comments like it doesn't affect. I could care less what anybody in the world thinks about me. So let alone what somebody who listens to a podcast. Um, that listens to a pod. No, I'm sorry. Uh, that, takes a, that takes the time to go out of their way to do something like that. But yeah, if you enjoy the show, leave a review. We appreciate it. It helps us out a ton. And we'll be back tomorrow picking up in round four. So we have a lot of bases to cover, but then the background will go pretty quickly. Not as much analysis here. It might be lightning round towards the end. It will be <laughs> lightning how round. we are. And the last five rounds were these names. <laughs> so <laughs> Matt will kick us off at pick four. We'll cap where his team is. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Adios.